Welcome. What? Well, that was what? Natasha. Yeah. We talked about this. I always do the intro. <laughs> Remember? Remember, I commanded it. Welcome to the Endless God Honeymoon Podcast. It. I'm Moshe. That's Mo- Natasha. Moshe's shoes are uh, just over the edge of acceptable. So we've moved past Crocs into a new zone. These are called I'm into the Croc, but I can't deal with this. Oh, now you're into the Crocs. It, now th- that our nothing is wearing? worse than this. This is cool. They're called Merrells. It's not cool. They're river walkers. Not cool. So I can go into a river in these. Yeah, but you're wearing socks and doing a podcast in Los Angeles. Well, I was going to go change. I mean, just to, t- to peel away the fourth wall a little bit, I was going to go change into some nice shoes. But Natasha said, why don't you keep wearing those and I can roast them. So go ahead, Natasha. Have at them. It's fine. I just like sometimes I, w- I'm, I want people to understand what you go through. <laughs> How much is too much? I Look, these are. I and think- I wanted people to humiliate you so that you would maybe consider not wearing them especially with like wild socks wait way in the, first of all these aren't wild way in in the chat if you're watching on youtube way in we don't have a chat but start a chat and then weigh in um what do you think of these i think they're pretty cool they look like swiss cheese from space and they've got like a little back strap if you want that look at that That's doing pretty, too much you're doing too much you know how they say you should take off one accessory uh-huh before you go out you should take those off you know, I think they look dope. They get, they provide more support. To, than, there's uh, like squiggly lines, like painted on. I think they're cool. I got to be honest with you. Oh they're rejected God. plastic. Um, I got them from uh, Huckberry, the the men's the men's department. They just did a profile on John Mulaney, so they've got their finger on the pulse of stand up comedy. These feel good. I look. I feel like I look good. They're gonna match really well at Burning Man. They're the color of Playa. And I feel good about them. And a lot of women have been sliding into my DMs since I started wearing these. Well, why don't you get some of those shoes with the toes and toe socks in them too? How about I put a toe up your butt? Um, for talking smack about my Merrells. Okay, so some people have written in. We want to answer some questions. Okay, let's do it. Okay, this question from I'm DJ Guy. Oh, I like the sound of this guy. She said she, quote, wants to be single, can't handle a relationship, unquote. But also expects exclusivity. Thoughts? What is that? That's I don't even I I don't even know what that is. Usually that's a guy that's like um, I'm a player and I want to fuck other people, but I want you not to fuck other people. That doesn't even make sense. So you're not in a relationship with someone. Wow. So you can play people that hard. You can be like, you know I'm is? not going to be monogamous, but I need you to be. Well, yeah, I think that's a manipulation that some some very like predatory men try but you know what this woman is i now i realize it without what? any other context any other information hmm. hot as fuck <laughs> she's definitely fly c- c- just to think she could get away with that you know what i mean <laughs> to be like i don't want to and be- this person's considering it enough to like to de- be debating it and not just be like fuck that yeah he's so he's sweating so hard you know he's like oh maybe if i stink around <laughs> do we, do we, do we, do we? I mean, I think. Wow, she must have the best body. That's a damaged. That's a damaged bird, and you know what you do with damaged birds. We all know what we do with damaged birds. If you see a damaged bird on the street, what do you do? Kind of put it. Uh, you crush its skull. <laughs> you got to crush its skull. There is a dead duck on our on our. Uh, there was street. a dead duck. Yeah, and uh, I think a coyote dropped it out of its jaws. It was pretty plump for the first day. It wasn't like run over. Yeah. I wonder how it's I should doing. have moved it out of the way because now I bet people have been running it over. It was like a 20 pound. It was big. Anyway, don't ever put up with stuff like this. Never, never. No one should put up with stuff like this. Maybe it was just like 10 pounds. Stop talking about the duck. Let's get back to IMDJ guy. No one should uh, put up with that kind of stuff. That kind of manipulation. That's such a mind game. Oh, yeah. I, do, I don't want to be in a relationship. I want to call myself single because I'm scared of being in a relationship and or I just don't want to commit to you but I also expect that you're not sleeping with other people it's like uh uh-uh, uh bye have you, have you ever done that to somebody fudge no really no hell no i never wanted that i wanted the opposite i wanted i wanted uh no well i guess i didn't want the opposite i wanted full like no commitment from anybody ever it not only because i wanted to be able to do what i wanted to do it scared me to be uh, in a relationship. So I would never expect exclusivity. Fuck no. I mean, at least I had the decency while I was in my fuckery to say, I am a man who engages in fuckery. And so... If, Can you if, not say that word? Okay. Um, when I was out there doing my thingy thing. I like that. That's nice. 
I, I, uh, you know, at least I had the decency to tell the women, like, I'm, that's who I am. If I'm not, if that's not what you want, you should move on. But I it certainly didn't restrict, attempt to restrict them from getting there. Do you know anyone who's done something like that? No, but I feel, oh, actually, I've heard about it from some sex predators. Oh, you know? men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they'll have, like, there was a famous DJ that was accused of having, like, a woman in every city that he, it was really an interesting story that he had, um, he would find these women at the raves. He was a very famous rave DJ. Um, should I say who he was? Allegedly. Allegedly. Mm, don't do it. Well, it's in the news. Bass Nectar. Allegedly. Allegedly. Also, I inspired him to start DJing. That's not allegedly. That He told me that. But anyway, allegedly, this Bass Nectar fella, who was a big bass DJ, he would find these women at the raves. At the, at, they came to see him in the culture. And he would like uh, start a correspondence with them and then start to like date them you know, from afar, but he, he wasn't like their boyfriend. He's traveling all over the world. And then he would like put them up in an apartment, tell them the rave scene was like dirty and immoral and sinful and gross and kind of like uh, 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 sequester them into this like apartment that he put them in. And he would just have like allegedly a girl in every port where he would go. Is this like more than 10? It was a it, allegedly systematic situation. So I get the instinct there. If you're a predator, you're like, oh, I want to like, I want to own these women and then go be able to do what I want. So there's just a woman waiting for me wherever I, whatever town I jaunt into to drop fat um, um, bass d- dubstep breaks. I'm, I'm going to be able to go to some, you know, Stepford studio apartment, fuck this innocent person whose life I've ruined and then move on to the next city. Men what, really are driven by sex, aren't they? Uh, but that's more than sex. No, I know. I know I that's mean, an look, extreme star, sick version of it. No, but if, I don't even I feel like that's not sex. If you're a rock star. I mean, Mick Jagger's on his ninth family. I just think that people are what they they're as faithful as they are. If they're that successful, first, it's first like of impossible. All, I, I know for sure that Mick Jagger has always been faithful. <laughs> He's never straight. He didn't. He wouldn't. But what I'm saying is like if it's about sex and you're the biggest DJ in the world or whatever, you can have sex every night. So it's not about sex. It's about like weird power triangulations and, you know, like having slaves. Yeah. The truth, the the point is that's not a relationship. You got to kick that. If someone is saying broke duck. that you can't, you have to be monogamous, but they don't have to be or unless you're if, into that. Even if they're not dating somebody else, it doesn't matter. That's still a manipulation. Yeah. That, why would you want that? Oh, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. Because don't. here's, yeah, because here's the thing. I just thought of it. You're either in a relationship with someone or not. So if you're not in a relationship with someone, what do you care if they're fucking somebody else? You know else? what we call that? What? Worst of both worlds. <laughs> you don't get the fun, sex, exciting sex stuff. And you don't get the fun, nice intimacy stuff. You just get manipulated. Get the fuck out, DJ guy. Go drop some beats, but don't do them like allegedly <laughs> Bass Nectar did. Okay, so let's hear some secrets, Mosh. Let's do it. Hi, Moshe and Natasha. This is a couple secret. Hi. Hi. I'm here with my partner. Um, Did not see that coming. It's going to make us sound like assholes, and and we're prepared for that. That's why we're calling the secret hotline. Um, We just moved to another city from uh, from the East Coast, and we kind of joke to ourselves about being coastal elites in this new small city. Uh, but not knowing anybody here, we decided to try our hand at swinging as it was something we talked about before moving. So now we kind of find ourselves in a uh, sort of big fish, spot, small pond situation. We thought we were going to have a lot of trouble with uh, jealousy and emotional things with hooking up with other couples, but we're finding the most difficult thing is holding a conversation because They've not really traveled anywhere and don't really read or, you know, you can have your cake and eat it. And sometimes the cake, their favorite restaurant is Outback Steakhouse. And you just got to say, that's cool, man. Anyway, love the show. Thanks. Bye. I mean, imagine the privilege. He could have let her say one sentence. I know. She was like, hi. I wonder whose idea it was to open the relationship up. Hmm. <laughs> Imagine being in multiple group sex situations and being bored. He's like, oh my God, the convo. 
What is, <laughs> is that why people get into this? For stimulating conversation? Wait. I mean, it, but it must make you feel a little more positive about your relationship because it's like you guys have a lot in common and, you you know, it makes you a little more happy that you're with the one you're with all day. Yeah, they, they say if you can't be with the one you love, fuck someone in a small town and talk about Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> how, I, how do they meet each other? What? Oh, how do they find these couples? Yeah. How Probably do they on all- the internet, right? What do you think they, what is it like swingers? Like, do you think places in Ohio have like a whole like underground? I think there's apps. There's apps for that. Mm. In fact, we've been told Couple about Couple swaps? The, yeah, we've been told about these apps. Mm. I think FetLife is one of them, but there's an app that's specifically for threesomes. He totally talked that girl into it, Of huh? course. He doesn't stop talking. All he cares about is talking. He's in there fucking <laughs> balls deep in a suburban soccer mom and he's just going god i wish this chat could be a little bit more stimulating enjoy yourself what do you mean just well i mean after the sex is done then you gotta like then what get wipe up hang out for like two hours they probably have to hang out afterwards wipe up and open the door be like no this is great you guys we'll do this again sometime that's what you used to do but that's rude i hear you i hear you well i'm sure that you are not um incapable of finding cool people in even in a small city there's people smarter than you there i can guarantee it shall we yeah let's hear another what's up love turds um <laughs> my name's barb and it's not really that big of a secret but um i do love your podcast my sex life is good i don't really have any questions but my secret is that um whenever my let me say it like natasha does my child and my husband go Anywhere, I smoke cigarettes while they're gone. <laughs> Not just uh, one, maybe a couple. And they have, he has no idea. My husband has no idea. And um, I love it. It's like my alone time. It's amazing. And yeah, cigarettes are great when you can just like have one, you know. But um, yep, that's my secret. You naughty, so naughty. Rad. She sounds like a family turd. <laughs> but how does she keep herself from smelling like cigarettes around? Oh, they're out of town, right? No, it's just like when they go out. Oh, yeah. What She's, do you do? A glove? I mean, it's like, oh, I have a little holder. Mm-hmm. Oh, you smoke cigarettes? No, but I have. I was in the garage <clears> today <throat> mm-hmm. and I had a, my boxing trainer come over. This is a big reveal for the podcast. I realized that I do boxing workouts and I, I'm a super fast puncher and hard hitter and can <laughs> kick anyone's ass. But anyway, there was a cigarette butt That's on the not garage for me. floor. That's not for Wasn't me. Wasn't from you? No. Because I know it ain't from me. I definitely would not be smoking in our garage. That does sound pretty trashy. That <laughs> sounds like what you do right after a, a foursome with a suburban couple. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if you can keep it, <clears throat> if you can keep it to once a day, I guess it's okay. It's probably okay. But as long as you're n- not the type of person where, if you can like buy a pack of cigarettes and it lasts six weeks you're probably not going to get emphysema i don't know but you it's know also I, bad for you I, oh so smoking <clears throat> in what way <laughs> it, are, i can't even tell if you're joking right now stop it smoking is bad for you wow that's something but i'm just saying everything's bad for you so if it brings you joy smoking's particularly bad for I you i know i know try the nicorette it's pretty pathetic get a vape come on get a vape enjoy your life Let's hear another secret. Okay. Hi, Moshe and Natasha. I have something that I haven't told anybody. I mentioned it to my husband, uh, but I think he thinks I was joking. I My dream job is to be a sex worker and not under like our current system, <laughs> but I honestly think that that would be the most amazing thing to be uh, be able to connect with people and to explore things that they are interested in, just have whatever kind of, you know, fantasies played out, whatever kind of just straight sex that they're just not getting it at home. And I don't see that happening under our, our current kind of patriarchal, puritanical system mm. where there's so much shame involved and I'm like, I don't want to like go work in a brothel in the desert. <laughs> um, but like a high-end marketing firm to be able to pick and choose and discuss with people what the project is going to be and to really make something of an experience for people. That just sounds amazing. So not going to happen, but that's my secret. 
So the reality, I mean, is she talking like her fantasy version of what this would be? Because the reality is it might not be guys who are appealing to you or attractive. I, it sounds or like she was attempting to say that she would girls. like to explore what people's desires are. And so it would, maybe in that system, it wouldn't matter as much um, how attractive your clients were. You could also vet them and only choose people that didn't repulse you. I mean, right. the truth is I, I'm a sex worker and it's not all it's cracked up to be. I guess I'm trying to understand that instinct. I think it's a, it sounded to me like a fantasy. Mm. And I was not surprised that her husband didn't take her seriously. I mean, it's a funny person to reveal this to. Oh, but what if you could like pick your clients? You can. That would be cool. You got. I would want to be like a really like. Only hotties. <laughs> that could be the name of your website. <laughs> hotties only. <laughs> Not even hot, just like appealing. People who are like... You but know. how are you going to make a living? If you're only banging dudes that you're like think are cool and, and sexy, you're not going to be able to pay the rent. Right, because anyone will have sex with them because they have so much natural charm. Who? The people who I'd be banging in oh, my only no. hotties. What I'm saying is like, you know, if you're trying to make a living, you got to probably... You, what if you were a massage therapist and you said, uh, you know, only, smooth skin only? It's like all of a sudden... <laughs> Anybody with a little patch on their elbow <laughs> is out and you're not going to be able to make a living. Okay. Know? All right. You know what? I'll open it up. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. Um, you'll, you'll bang some fogos? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Give us a call if you have a secret at 213-222-8608. Hey, be, on our, be a member of our Patreon. Don't be a fool. It's oh, yeah. Patreon.com slash Endless Honeymoon. We had an amazing dinner party. It was awesome. And we're going to have another one. I'm about to drop a mixtape. It's coming. You know, it was like a deep connecting time. I really beautiful. liked it. I really liked it, too. I really like you, Natasha. And I, I actually more than like you. I love you. Oh, I love you, too. 